Hello fans, I'm here with Ross Fletcher. Ross, thank you ever so much for joining us today. Good to see you, John. Well, we have a beautiful view here of Elliott Bay. And we're Great not showing anybody, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But anyway, fans, just trust me, it's gorgeous out here. Ross, can you tell us what you've been up to since you left the Sounders? Yeah, still loving life living in Seattle and commentating for Fox Sports on European games, Bundesliga games, Europa League games, working some other bits and bobs, and then going to Rio for what will be my fifth Olympic Games in the next uh, couple of months or so, which will be fantastic. And any thoughts on the Sounders this season? A, a lot of people are frankly a little concerned. Eight goals in eight games towards the bottom of the table, the Western Conference. What, what's your view of how the Sounders season is playing out so far? Yeah, I think you have to be concerned. There are genuine concerns. The dynamism, the spark from last season has gone. One very simple reason for that, the loss of Oberfemi Martins. The Sounders sold their leading scorer and best player two weeks before the start of the season, having spent the entire preseason changing their formation to try and fit Martins and Morris and Dempsey and Valdez into the team. Now, you understand why they're doing that, because you want to get as many players who are your best players on the field as possible. Round pegs in round holes. But then to let Martins go, having changed your entire system, and then see that this 4-3-3 clearly isn't working as well as the 4-4-2 did last year, knowing also that Ziggy Schmidt has been a career 4-4-2 guy, you have to ask questions and say, what is the direction of this team? When will they go back to a 4-4-2? Will they try Dempsey up front with Jordan Morris? There are so many questions, John, because you're not getting the best either out of Clint Dempsey playing in that attacking midfield role. You want him closer to goal. Yes, you want him involved in the play and the build-up, but again, if you're playing him deep, you're not going to see that reward in terms of goals and goals from Clint Dempsey because he simply cannot influence the play where he needs to, which is close to goal, if he's in that withdrawal role. So there's really been a ripple effect from the loss of Martins, and they haven't been able to properly figure that out yet. You hear the comments from Stefan Fry this week saying, not one of us believes that we played to our potential this season. There have got to be reasons for that, and I don't think the team necessarily looks comfortable. On the plus side, Jordan Morris has come through that uh, sticky spell early on. We always knew he would be a very good talent in MLS, and scoring three goals in three games for him will do his confidence the world of good. But can the likes of Dempsey and Morris mesh? You saw last year, Dempsey and Martins love to play one-twos, little give and goes together, it was flamboyant, they had a real connection, they were on the same page, as Dempsey would always say when he was asked the question pretty much every other week, what makes you and Martin so special? We're just playing pickup. it's just enjoyable. This year it's entirely different because Dempsey and, Ma and, uh, and Morris are very different players. Morris looks to play in the channels, doesn't look to combine as much with Dempsey or whoever else is up there if it's Nelson Valdez. Um, so they've got a lot of issues to sort out, I think, and the way MLS is going with a, a bigger influx of quality talent and other teams in the division critically starting to pick up their own ambitions. You only have to look at Colorado Rapids and the way they've started, top of the Western Conference. You realize playoffs, which Seattle have managed to muster in all of their seven seasons so far in MLS, are no longer a given. I think this season, until we see what signings are made after July, will be a bit of a slog for the Sounders, and they haven't really had to slog too hard in relative terms in their seven years so far. And you bring up another good point, Ross. Things will not get easier. Copa America is coming to the U.S. next month. The Sounders will be losing, I believe, about half a dozen players to that. What are your thoughts on the competition and its impact on MLS? Well, six Sounders are going for the Copa America, and they'll miss probably a couple of away games. That's more players from, from, than any other MLS side that they're losing. And, of course, you're losing... Clint Dempsey, you're losing Jordan Morris. We'll wait and see what the actual final squad is from the preliminary group of players that Jurgen Klinsmann has brought in. But certainly you'd expect Dempsey to be there. Nelson Valdez with Paraguay, of course, and Jovin Jones with Trinidad and Tobago, or rather, um, you look at some of the other players that will be there that the Sounders are missing. But can they find that squad, the Sounders, to, to meld together? You only have to look at last season when they were missing Martins through injury, Dempsey through ripping up a referee's notebook in the summer. 
they couldn't get it going without their star players. They just were unable to fathom it. They couldn't play their way out. The coaches couldn't coach their way out of the problems. Eventually, they bought their way out of problems. Will they have to do that again in the summer? Look, it's only going to be probably a couple of games they're missing those guys, so it should be a different scenario. But there's no Obafemi Martins. Who do you call on from the depth who's going to step up? And Seattle this year, having spent so much on players last season, had to let some big names in, in relative terms go. People who would score goals for you, like Lamar Nagel, nine goals and nine assists a couple of seasons ago. Chad Barrett, who's good for five or six goals a season off the bench. The retirement of Gonzalo Pineda. The strength in depth simply isn't there now. So they're going to struggle. That's the impact it will have on Seattle in MLS. The other teams, yeah, they'll be impacted, I think. But I think the Sounders will be impacted the most. And given what's happened in terms of the EPL and all the TV money that's going into the league, do you think this is a blip or do you think maybe this is a fundamental change in the EPL? Now Leicester, their team, probably worth a tenth of what Chelsea paid for their outlay on their stars and their squad certainly doesn't go anywhere near as deep as the top four or maybe even the top six. You only have to look at Spurs behind them who have a, a much deeper squad and they're second in the league, but not one of the big four. Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea, Arsenal. You even throw in Liverpool there. They have all deeper squads and more expensive squads than Leicester. But what's happened now is the television money in the Premier League has gone stratospheric. And it's allowing some of those, quote, smaller clubs to compete harder and be able to resist selling some of their top players. I don't think this will be a one-off. Certainly it's not going to happen with any regularity that Leicester City are going to win the league, then next year West Bromwich Albion will win the league and then Swansea City will win the league. But certainly I think you'll see more of those middle to lower ranked clubs having better years because they can compete financially. Ross, we really appreciate you joining us and hopefully we'll do this again. Thank you very much. Sure we will.